Sit down and talk with me. Lend me your ear and I'll bring you along. We can split the day rate 50 50. Oh, baby, I get by. Oh, and all I need is somebody. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna get high. Welcome to the Pro EDU Podcast. Talk and drink with your favorite artist. So grab yourself a cold sarsaparilla, take your pants off, kick back, and enjoy. What about you? I'll take comfort in that. I believe we are live. Um, in this episode, we are joined with photographer Dave Fogarty, who uh, Instagram is at ginger underscore beard underscore photos. Dave, thank you for joining us. No problem. Thank you for having me. So I was just looking through your Instagram before, and it looks like you're traveling at the moment. Where are you at? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm in, uh, I'm in Dubai at the minute. So uh, here for a few weeks doing on assignment. So fun times. So yeah, you are a, you, you consider yourself a sports photographer, documentary photographer, like what type of work do you do? Um, yeah, I'm a commercial sports and, uh, yeah, commercial and sports photographer. I kind of do a bit of everything there. And you've got quite the unique role of, uh, being full time with someone. Um, who do you work for? Yeah, so I am the head photographer of Claymore Productions. So I'm Conor McGregor's personal photographer and the head photographer of his production company. You are probably living every man's dream job right now. So like, <laughs> that, how good does that feel? Yeah, it's, 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 it's a very unique and cool job. Definitely. I, I definitely don't take it for granted. I, there's times where I, I look around and I'm just like, this is mad. This is my life. But uh yeah, I definitely appreciate it and having a lot of fun doing it. That's awesome. So let's start with how this came about. Did you study art? How did you get into photography? And then like, how did you land this job? Yeah, so I started like my, I was always into taking photos. Um, but like, I never really, I never thought of it doing it as a job or a career. I grew up in a very middle class family where, you know, you went to school, you went to college, and you got a job. My mom, my mom and dad have you know, normal jobs. So that's kind of was always the, the plan was to get a normal job. Um, but I just, I'm, I'm very dyslexic. So I wasn't very good in school. Like it wasn't bad, but I just wasn't very, very good at school. So I didn't really know when it comes to numbers and maths, I'm very, very bad at. So I was like, all right, well, I'm, when I finish school, I'm not going to work with numbers. So I was like, right, well, I can't be an accountant. I can't work a business. I was like, well, what am I going to do? And I didn't know, I had no idea what I was going to do. So um, when I finished when I finished school, so like high school, I suppose it would be for you. Um, I went on to university and college and I did a degree in communications because um, I looked at it and it would, didn't have any maths. So I was like, yeah, I'll just do this and I'll figure out what I want to do after. So I, I did that. Um, so I got a, a bachelor in arts and communications and then I, I didn't know what to do. So I ended up emigrating to Australia because it was kind of the thing that all my friends were doing at the time everyone just in Ireland, when you finished college, you went to Australia. So that's what I did. And then I worked for, I worked for a bank selling insurance and, uh, I absolutely hated it. It was terrible. I was just sitting in an office all day and I was just like, no, I don't want to do this at all. So I, um, so I left and I went back, I went back home. So I, I train, um, I was training MMA and kickboxing and jujitsu at the time. 
So I kind of wanted something because I just come back from Australia. I was like, I don't want to go get a normal job. So what, what will I do? So I was at home for a bit and then my parents are kind of like, you know, you have to do something here. You can't just sit at home. So I had, I actually applied for a job in, um, in Dublin port. So like working with, I actually don't know what even the job was going to be doing, but I just applied for a job in Dublin port. Cause I was like, oh, I paid okay money. I was like, I could do that. So I applied for, applied for the job. And then at the same time I applied for, to go back to college again, to do photography in Griffith college. Cause I was like, I always like taking photographs. I could definitely train MMA and take photographs at the same time. So, um, I was actually driving home from, I was in the city and I was driving home and I got a phone call and my, my, I dropped my phone down the side of the, 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 the chair in the car. So I didn't answer the first phone call. And then I got another phone call. So I got my phone out and answered it. And then it was Griffith college saying that they'd accepted me to do their, to do the program. So I was like, oh, great. I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take it. Cause I was actually, it actually had started, I was a week behind. So like, oh, we kind of need to know as soon as possible if you're going to take it or not. So I was like, oh yeah, I'll just take it. I'll, I'll do it. So I took it there on the spot. And then the first phone call that I missed was Dublin port ringing me up saying that I had the job, but I was like, so buzzing that I was going, that I got into the, the college course. I ended up just taking that and not going working for Dublin port and kind of the rest is history. That's, I mean, that seems kind of like fate. It was like, don't answer that first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was very lucky. I mean, I, when I look around in my life now, I just think like how different it would be if I worked in Dublin port. That's, that's awesome. And I love that you were down in Australia. I, I do remember running into a lot of, uh, you know, people from Ireland down there and the Irish, which, I mean, I have to say that the Irish, I mean, Irish and Australians are pretty much my favorite people in the world. Uh, <laughs> They're the best. So compare and contrast the English to Australians. Like who, who's, who's better? Um, and uh, cussing is okay. I, 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 have, I have, I have a lot of, I have a lot of English friends. So I've no, I've, I've no beef with, <laughs> with, with anyone. I, I, I think they're, they're yeah, grand. Yeah. I like, they're, I like, I liked Australia. I like, I like England. I like, I like London. I like loads of parts of, of England. So I, uh, so they're both, they're both good with me. I like everybody. <laughs> what a diplomatic answer. Yeah. As an American, I love every moment of jabbing at the British. <laughs> yeah, no, I love I love everybody. I love the Americans. I love I love everybody. That's awesome. That's awesome. So then all right, so you're in school at this point. Is this like a two year program, four year? How long are you in school? So it was it was a it was three years and then you got the option of doing do going on to do to do another one, to do four years to get a, a bachelor in art. So the first one was, oh, it was a two and maybe it was two years and three years. I actually can't even remember. I, it was, uh, I actually think it was two years and three years. So the first two years, when you finish, you got a diploma and then you could continue on, do one extra year and get the, the bachelor in art. So I did that. I did the three, yeah, it was three years. So I did the three year program and I, I got the bachelor in arts in it. And, uh, so at the yeah, time, are very, you very, very cool. using digital or is this still film or is it? just kind of all of no it was it was it, it was digital so it was a um a, yeah yeah i was shooting shooting everything on digital i i wish going back now i wish i could go back and do it again because i was like i just wanted to shoot digital i just wanted to shoot combat sports i kind of knew i thought in my head i knew what i wanted to do so that's all i was trying to do but i wish i, I did more i wish i was in was in the dark room more like i was in the dark room a lot but i wish i just enjoyed it more and i wish i did more like we had when I look at it now, the, the, the equipment we had access to, like we had equipment to, to a dark room, we had large medium format film cameras. Like, I just wish I did more film just because it's so cool. And yeah. I I just I now, now when I look at how expensive it is to do it myself, I'm just like, oh, I should have just done more of it at the time. So do you shoot film when you're traveling at all? Or is it just every once in a while? Uh, no, I, I do. I do shoot film the odd time. I have a film camera as I think about it. it's around here somewhere having one of my bags i just bring it around but like i'll shoot the odd thing on 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 film when it comes to actual when it comes to what i'm actually working on so if i'm shooting shooting connor i'll do it all digital well i'll do 99 percent of it digital and then if i have the film camera with me i'll shoot a few frames off off on on film but i can't just rely fully on film just the yeah. turnaround speeds are so fast like and i it's when i take pictures of him he wants to see him nearly straight away so i need to get him off and tell him this is going to take seven to 10 business days. It doesn't, <laughs> doesn't really fly in this, uh, in this neck of the woods. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, bad person to make angry. I would say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
All right. So a lot of things uh, with after graduation, of like how long did it take before? And you kind of like, in, you were one of the first people to kind of do this full time for another fighter or an athlete. So it, how long did that take? And like, how did you end up landing this gig? Yeah, I, I, I've said, I've said it to a few, a few people and, and I'll, I'll say it again. I think I was the first, I think I pioneered the personal photography in, in all of combat sports. I challenge anyone to, to, to dispute me on that. But, uh, I think there's a lot of a lot of photographers out there that they uh that should be sending me christmas cards thanking me because i'm pretty sure i was the first so um i i saw when i was in college i i met connor i bumped into him and we had minor interactions as he was coming up but like i didn't i wouldn't say that i knew him or he knew who i was but um so as my rise in photography and his rise in fame kind of came at the same time so it was the last year in college, we had to do a video module. It was just part of the program. So you had to go off and film, make a, a short documentary. And uh, at the time I was working for this website called Severe MMA. And uh, so I was covering all of Irish MMA and that's who I was covering it for. They kind of helped me get access to everything. And I supplied the photographs for the website and stuff. So at the same time I was working for them, they were making, they were involved in filming documentaries for connor so they were filming his he has two documentaries on netflix so he has the first the first one uh the older one they were filming that and it was kind of going on for a while nobody sure you know no one had actually bought it they hadn't they weren't actually sure what was going to go on with it so it was kind of like the never-ending story to them so one of the producers uh gavin fitzgerald he was also filming it i think he had a, another job on and uh, he just said that he can't make it. He, he Connor was fighting. Um, it was originally meant to be Connor against, um, oh, I can't, I can't remember his name now. It's the, this is going to annoy me. He, it, it was uh, Rafael de Sanos. It was meant to be Connor against Rafael de Sanos in Las Vegas. And Gav just rang me and just said, hey, I can't make it. Will you go over and do it? And I was like, yeah, of course. Like, no problem. I'll go film that. It was video. And I was like, yeah, no problem. Never did video before. It was didn't even know how the settings on my phone on like on the camera. I had to go around to Gavin's house and I was like, <laughs> like, what settings do I use? Like, how do I, how do I do this? So he showed me, he's like, oh, you'd be grand. So I was like, all right. So I went over to do it. And then Rafael Desanos pulls out and he fights Nate Diaz. And then, so I did the whole, I did the, the whole fight week and I recorded it. And as I was doing, I was taking pictures at the same time, just, just an odd, the odd few pictures, because that's what I was more comfortable doing. So I was like, oh, I might not get this opportunity again. So I was filming and take, taking pictures. And then, of course, uh, Connor loses to, um, to Nate Diaz, which was, which was terrible for, for him. But I was like, oh, lovely. <laughs> I was like, because no matter how bad the film is, they're going to have to use it. I was like, it's part of the story. So I was like, oh, <laughs> this is just, like works out for me. And uh, I ended up sending him the pictures then, and then didn't hear anything from him for, for months. And uh, I didn't even think, I sent him on Facebook. That's how long ago it was. I sent him on Facebook Messenger. And then he uh, he eventually opened them up. Yeah, so they used the, the footage, kind of goes on, rematches, Diaz beats him. Um, and then he was obviously looking through his Facebook messages and seeing the, the pictures, and he, he liked them and said, come down to the gym, and uh, we'll try this out for a week and see how we get on. And that was, uh, that was like seven or eight years ago now. So just been coming down ever since. Nice. The, you know, the, the one thing that comes to mind, I mean, you have like the coolest job ever, but you know, you're also, <laughs> you're also married and you also have a family. So how yes. does that like, kind of like weigh into like, you know, cause how much are you on the road? Like half the time, more than half the time, like probably on the road about eight, eight to nine months of the year, probably realistically. And that's then rough. Home. That's yeah, rough. it is. It is. It is. It's very rough. I have the most understanding wife in the world, and I love her very, very much. I um, she totally gets it. She, so when I first met her, I was I'd already I was obviously working for Connor, um, so she kind of knew what it was from the start. The first, the first, so we went on one date, and then I was like, oh, like you know, let let's go on another date. So I was like, oh, I have to go to America. I'll be. I'll be back in three days. So like, let's do something next week. And then three weeks later, I was like, oh yeah, no, I'm, I'm in the Bahamas. <laughs> I was like, I haven't come home yet. So she knew what it was from the, uh, from the very, from the very start. So, uh, but it is, it's, it's, it, it, it's, it's rough. Luckily over the, uh, the last few months, she's a, she's actually a, prim a primary school teacher. 
so she teaches kids so she's actually come oh, on so she has patience <laughs> she, she has, has patience. All patience yeah yeah she's all the patience in the world she's she's very understanding she gets to take a bit more time and come out with us on the road a bit a, a bit more now so it's all a uh, she's very understanding but yeah it's, it, it can it can be hard like you know you're away from your friends and your family a lot but it's it's part of the job. People only see the, 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 like, oh, you have the best job ever. It's so, so glamorous. You're in all these places, but it all comes at a cost. Yeah. But I, I do, I, I'm very, I'm very grateful to be in this position to be able to do it. So I, I never forget that. That's awesome. So since you're traveling a lot and you're someone who definitely uses lighting and appreciates lighting, what is your travel? Uh, what's your travel pack? Like what's, what do you bring with you everywhere? So I have, uh, I've like the same, I bring the same stuff everywhere. I have, um, so I have my camera bag and then I have a, uh, like a gear bag, like a suitcase. And then that I, I really only have two, I have two modifiers. Um, so I have, I bring, so for when it comes to lighting, I've got two, um, of the pro photo, the a one and the a one X. And then I have the two pop-up, uh, soft boxes. And then I have a, a pop-up. Uh, beauty dish, which is some random like uh, pop up beauty dish that I that I found. It's like a spurious one that fits on all cameras. Or it fits on all lights. Yeah, like it's made for it's made for the flash guns. So oh, I just yeah, bring yeah. bring that around, and then I have a a, a stand, just like two cheap stands. Or because I normally just get people to hold the lights for me. I'm like here, hold yeah. this. And Traveling like, with stands the is the worst. I don't know how we can yeah. improve on this, but uh... there's some very good lighter weight ones now that have come out. And especially when you're working with like the one, the A, the A ones and the A one X that they're, they are quite light. So there's a lot of, a lot of ones now that are a, um, that are much lighter and, and much easier to bring around. But when you're traveling with no, the mo most I can bring is 40 kilos over two bags. And yeah, like, I go away for months at a time, so I have one bag for all my clothes, and then it only really leaves me twenty kilos for everything else. So I don't. I try and travel as light as I can and just make do. That's so awesome. The one thing that I've learned yeah. is that like you just gotta you gotta work with what you have in hand. And if every every time I take a picture, I'm like, oh, I could have been better if I did this. I could have been better. But the picture you have is always better than the picture you could have had. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> I like that. So what were your last three cameras and what camera are you using right now? I have two Sony's. I have uh, a, uh, an A, they change the name so much. I know. <laughs> yeah, I've been, I've been I have a Sony A1. Um, I have a Sony A1 and a Sony, um, the nine, was it the? A9. I'm terrible when it comes to, yeah, yeah the A9. I have an A9 Mark II, that's it. And then I have a Leica Q2 and then I have a old film camera somewhere in my bag nice and so now, yeah the, the a1 right or the yeah the a1 is that what it yeah is? a1 it's an absolute be it's an absolute beast that's it's their like, flagship it, like sports yeah editorial uh camera so and that gets what like a thousand images like, a second just like <laughs> yeah it's like 50 megapixels it's like such an overkill when it like trying to trying to just manage the file sizes on it is is crazy but i really really like the uh the the sony like i really like sony I don't think, I don't think I, I, just for carrying around all day for hours at a time, like it's super, super lightweight, yeah. super small product placement here. So get onto me, Sony, no, super I, small, super light, lightweight. Yeah. It, a, um, it doesn't, it doesn't weigh down. I, mean, I used to use Canon, you used to have the, the one DX and I have like irreparable back damage from carrying two of them around. Even like, I'd say my, I, I, I don't want the airlines to hear this, but I'd say my camera bag is like. 20 like 24 30 kilos and i just like carry it around especially when i have my laptop and my ipad and everything in it but um just having having light compact cameras is so key and then with being so small and so good that it just literally does everything i need it to do and I, I i actually do i love it i don't think i could change off this only system now yeah well not saying that's, that's kind of want to yeah and that's kind of want to come on board then call me. <laughs> well yeah it, it, it'll happen uh, that definitely happened for you. Um, so post-production wise, are you spending most of your time in post-production, like going through the, the million photos you just shot of a fight? Yeah. So what I do is a typical session. I'll shoot between probably 800 to 2000 pictures per session. So if he's doing like pad work, um, there'll be a lot more than if he's doing like weights. 
So a padwork session, probably about two about two thousand pictures. So I go through, I bring them into uh to Lightroom, select them down. Then when usually we train in the same things repeatedly. So we'd like if we go to a gym, I know all right, we're gonna be in this gym for X amount of weeks or X amount of days. So I'll make a preset for that gym. So I just put the preset on all on all the pictures and then I go through and fine fine tune it. Because like, you know, I still have the light changes and, and everything. But the turnaround speeds now everyone expects and knows about are so fast that like going through and individually editing every single picture is it just isn't an option. And he likes to see so many of them that I just get them over. I, I hit the preset on them, adjust them, send them over, and then he has a look at them. And if there's any ones that, that he's going to post or that I think are cool, I'm going to post, I'll go back in then and I'll redo those ones. But people just, people know now that you can send it from your, your camera to your phone. So like the, the expectations and the turnaround speed have just come, become so much higher that you just have to learn to, to have a, a steady workflow that I use, like I, I know my workflow, like it's probably, if I tell someone else, they're like, oh, you do it like that. And I was like, yeah, but that's my workflow works perfectly for me. Like I can, I can whack these pictures off. I can have them over to them in, in like yeah. under an hour. I was like, I no problem. F- Fuji was the first, they just launched this. I saw it at, uh, whatever last conference I was at, uh, they go right to frame IO to like camera to cloud using the hardware, um, which is fucking awesome. It's just crazy what the, it's like, it's, it's like a, a technology war between all the, the, the camera companies now. It's just crazy with the things that they can do and like, like sending it from your phone, from your camera to your phone. Like when, when that first came out, I was just like blown. I was like, this is amazing. I was like, no, I don't do it too often. But like, I can send a raw image from my camera to my phone. I was just like, I was like this is crazy. And then I can just airdrop them. I was like, it's just, it's nuts, the things you can do now. But it just makes, it makes the expectation so much higher, but it, it makes the workflow. It's just, I can just do it so fast. And like, I, I have my workflow down. And I think that's one thing that I think everybody should, should do. Like you don't, I could tell you how I do mine, but that mightn't be the way that you do yours. Like it'd be so much different. It's so individual, the workflow, but it's just get a workflow down yourself. So you can just sit down. I just go into autopilot. I just, just know where everything is. Like I have, have little sticky things in the back of my laptop where I put my hard drive and and the card reader, like I can do it blindfolded. I know exactly where everything is, where everything needs to go. Like I can open things up even in the menu bar, my laptop, I know where everything is and I've done it a thousand times. So. I know exactly where to do and how to do it and how much of it to do. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so as someone who is kind of more classically trained that went to university, um, like what are you doing now to like keep learning or like staying sharp with like, you know, you mentioned product photography before this interview. So are you yeah. using, you know, YouTube courses, like all of the above? Yeah, no, it's not actually just because I'm on this podcast. I was actually saying to my wife, I was like, when, when it messed, messed me to, to do this, I was like, this is mad. I have this app. I use this app all the time and it's not being paid. It's no product placement. It is 100% genuine. I use this app all the time. I have it on my phone and get it up. I have it, I have it on my phone and I use it nearly every day. But not, I wouldn't say every day. So yeah. I have it, have it there, but I use it for, if I'm going on flights, I'll download courses to watch just because I like to be immersed in photography. I enjoy photography. So if you have a new course on a plane, I'm like, oh, cool. Like when I was coming here, I downloaded the uh, dramatic lighting course and watched it like three times, but I, I downloaded again to watch it. This job, what I do, especially being the head photographer of the production company, it's not just photographing him. I get a call going, oh, he has a new drink coming out. A new bottle of whiskey, like the the proper twelve. We need to photograph that. He's got his stout coming out now. The forged Irish stout. We need to photograph that. It could be a fashion. It could be anything. So, yeah, I never say no. Like I can't really go. Oh, I don't know how to do that. So I just go on and I'll look at it and I'll watch the the uh, the the product photography. I watch a retouching, the dramatic lighting course. Like I've said, I've watched so many of them. Even so, if I have a problem, I'll go on and, and I'll watch it. If uh, if I'm sitting around not doing anything, and you know, I've, I've completed Netflix at this point, so I'm just like, I'll go on and, and watch it just to be inspired to see how other people do things. And like, you've a sports, a, a sports one on it, I've watched that one just I was like, well, that's not how I do it. Like, you know, I don't have time to set up all 
all lights but when i do i'm like all right cool i'm gonna do that i'm gonna take little i take little bits from from each course and then i just apply it and then i, I take it forward and that that's how i can't I'm constantly learn and constantly looking at what other people are doing and like you know just how can how can i take something from like uh a Vogue shoot or a, uh, how can I apply that? How can I apply something from high fashion to, to this sports? How can I make this pad session, which I've photographed a thousand times? How can I make this different? And that's when I go on and I look at the lighting courses and I, and I look at the sports things and even the product stuff. I'm like, all right, well, how can I do, how can I bring this in? Like I learned so much from using the app and from doing it that Thank it you. just, it's helped that's me awesome. immensely. Yeah. When we were, uh, you know, reaching out to different people, it was like, oh, they already follow us. And it was like, oh, awesome. And then, you know, when uh, I think you started talking with uh, uh, Michael, it was like, oh, I've seen a lot of your courses. Like, I think we all did just like a little dance, <laughs> like in the studio here. <laughs> so it's it's awesome that we're, you know, helping photographers just get, even if it's just marginally better every single day. Um, and like the fact that, you know, you, you shoot sports, but you watch the product photography. I mean, to us, it's so important to watch lighting for product because it will actually help you, your understanding of, of, you know, how light works in maybe like a, a sports shoot. So that's, that's yeah, really the awesome. Food and beverage be one. The food and beverage one was actually a huge help because it's a, he has a, he has a restaurant, the Black Forge in, in Dublin, and it prides itself on, on its, on its food. The food there is phenomenal. So when that was opening, I'd never shot food before in my life. I did it in college and was terrible at it. And I was like, just, it made it look so bad. Food is so hard to shoot and so hard to shoot well. That I remember going on and I watched the food course about six times. And I was like, all right. And then when I went to do it, I was like, right, well, I'd, I'd literally watched it so much that I came in and I was like, all right, I kind of know what I'm doing. And I never shot food before and it came out perfect. And I was like, oh, this is, this is grand. That's awesome. And everyone loved the photos. Yeah, yeah, they use them on their website. There was it looked it looked like I knew what I was doing. So I was like, oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a big help. It's a big help yeah. from watching from from using the app so much and to to watch it. Like if you're showing up and people think you know what you're doing, then they they have faith in you, even if you don't. <laughs> like loads of times I showed up and I was just like, I have no idea what I'm doing here. But I was like, <laughs> all right, let's just do it. And then just, I you just exude confidence. Like, yeah, it's gonna be fine. We're gonna get great shots. And then you do. And then once people feel that you know what you're doing it puts them at ease and then that puts you at ease there's nothing worse when you have a client on edge and that puts you on edge yeah especially me i get <laughs> my wife always says it to me she can tell like my hands get, get clammy like and i get nervous and it's just like relax and she's like you know what you're doing i was like yeah yeah sometimes you just need someone to tell you you know what you're doing and that confidence yeah. comes from watching watching stuff like this where you're going you're like no i know what i'm doing i've seen I've seen this this photographer do it do it. I've watched it six times. I know if I backlight it and then I'll have to put a key light here. And then if it looks a bit gloopy, then I just have to put a bit, put a, a flag up. And I was like, this, I showed up and I was like, right, we're going to do it here. We're going to do this. And everyone just started doing it. And I was just like, all right, people think I know what I'm doing here. <laughs> so it was perfect. That's awesome. And you were able to shoot, uh, the beverage one is quite a bit different and probably shooting glass is one of the hardest things to do. And I know yeah. Connor has a, it's an Irish whiskey, right? Yeah, yeah. So Connor has uh, the proper 12. So there's two flavors of it now. So it's proper 12 and um, the Irish apple. So they, they, when we do those, they're, it's big production. Like now those are a little bit easier because I've got a, I've got a grips and, you know, I've got a lighting team, and, you know, there's, it's usually set up for an ad. So the DP is there and like a lot of it is, is pre-lit for, for still or for video. So I just kind of come in and I like add a little, touches but it's usually pre-done already so so that's a lot easier but then he has a um he's a new stout so it's um it's like a new a beer a black beer i'm not gonna you say the g word but it's that's, <laughs> <laughs> it, that's yeah. it's like that except much much tastier much creamier but uh yeah. so he has that coming out now so that's all him so that doesn't have that that behind it you know when we go to do an ad or we go to shoot that that's that's just us doing it so i don't have the safety blanket of the grips and the dp to to fall behind so that's again like i said i'll go watch those videos and then i'll, I'll plan out uh, a plan out ahead and i kind of already have a, a lighting map in my head because i've watched so many stuff already like it, and even just between shooting a bottle of whiskey and shooting a pint are just so much different they're so different that there's something there's something for everybody in all the courses and i honestly can't recommend them enough and you can't watch them enough either that's awesome. Thank you so much. Um, all right. So like your day to day, 
is like, what's your average day when you're traveling? Like, do you know what days you have off? Are you always on call? And are you more like editorial, just like take photos, of whatever you want? How does it work? Yeah. So it's, um, when it comes to day to day, every day, every day is the same, but every day is different. So I usually get up, I, I'll try and squeeze a workout in. Then I just, I wait, we, I wait, Connor will kind of wake up here. He just two training sessions a day. So we'll do the morning training session, usually a skill-based workout. So it'll be like pads, grappling, um, you know, kickbox and sparring, kind of like the, the technical aspects of, of, of MMA. So we'll do that. Then, uh, so I'll go shoot that, edit it, save it, send it. Uh, then, uh, usually get, have a break in between, uh, have a little bit of time off, chill, um, uh, make food, <laughs> try and try and try and again, but usually not. And then in the evenings, we usually do a, a strength or a conditioning. So he has his McGregor fast program and we'll usually do a workout for that. So that'll be like weightlifting, um, a cardio workout. So like running bike rides. So it's kind of build the engine. So that's usually what we go into then. So and even, so it's all sports and it's all Connor, but it's all different. Like it, it could go from shooting out in a, in a really brand new gym with like perfect lighting. And then he could do it out in the park somewhere. Like he's, he'll train wherever, like people think that he only goes to these certain places, but he gets the work in no matter where he is, no matter what we're doing, Connor gets the work in. So like we could do, we could be doing pads on a green area in a hotel. It, it doesn't matter in a park on the beach, like anywhere. So it's the same person in the same things, but it changes so much that you kind of every day, every day is the same, but every day is different as well. So it's good. It keeps you on your toes. And then you sometimes in between that, there is, he has so many different brands and, and stuff going on that we, I could get a call going, Oh, we, his suit company has called and they need these fashion shots or the, you got to go do this or that. So there's usually something in there every so often that spices up and then we'll have like the big adverts to do. So I'm kind of a bit of everything. I do sports, editorial, fashion products, kind of bit of everything. So that's, what's very good about this job is I've gotten a taste. And if you'd look, look at my work, it's kind of like all over the place. Like, you know, I've done so much. Yeah. All right. So let's actually get into your work. I'm going to share, you want me to share your Instagram or your website and go through it? Yeah. Uh, I think my website's probably, probably cooler. So All right, cool. if you're seeing this, go follow me on Instagram though. Ginger beard photos. Ginger beard photos. I like that. So you're really leaning into the red Irishman. Yeah. That's kind of how it's just, it's how people knew me. They were like, Oh, you know, Dave, the, the, the little ginger haired lad with the, uh, with the camera. So I was like, yeah, ginger beer photos. I used to have a much bigger ginger beer, but my wife likes it a bit tidier these days. So <laughs> happy wife, happy life. Yeah, absolutely. So, all right. All right. So obviously, you know, you're shooting a lot of Connor, but what, how did this happen? So this is when we met Mike Tyson. So Mike Tyson came to Ireland and he invited Connor along. It was kind of like a Q and a, so we kind of, we went into to the back room. We, we met Mike. So I was probably in the room for like, I'd say it was like five minutes, him and Connor were talking. And then I just seen Mike was obviously smoking some of his KO Kush or whatever his weed is called. And I just seen him, he was doing like the French inhale, they call it. So where he comes out of your mouth and up your nose. And uh, I just seen that Classy. and I was like, yeah, a lot. I, I actually only, someone pointed out to me a lot of my, a lot of my photos are people smoking things. Just, yeah. It's like, isn't, isn't encouraged. It's just, I just think it looks cool. Smoke always looks cool though. So yeah. All I right, end so, up shooting a lot of Connor and rappers. And yeah. Rappers so Quavo, I mean, he's one of my favorites. How'd you get in? How'd you get in with him? So they, they were playing in Ireland and their, I think it was a Quavo's assistant just reached out to me and just said, the lads are shooting this festival. Well, I think their photographer couldn't make it. And they're like, Oh, will you shoot? And I was like, yeah, of course, no problem. So it just went along and sh shot their set. But when it comes to the stuff, I prefer doing like taking portraits, trying to try and get portraits of the people rather than the perform the performance, whether that be yeah. sports or, or anything. I try and get a, a personality and try and get a nice, a nice portrait of them. Yeah. Well, that's a cool, do you, so do you have really cool, uh, outfits like this that you wear as well? Are you like, <laughs> Yeah, well, this is the thing. He's so he's so well dressed. He's so snappy and well dressed that like, and he goes to he does go to such cool locations that like, 
you're bound to get a to get a good one. This is in the south of France on a, his Lamborghini yacht that I uh, that he got. So the sun is just going down. You have the reflection coming coming from a camera right there, and then you have the the leading line from the from yeah. it's like the windscreen of the boat that just leads you down into him. He's wearing a matching silk Versace set, so it's just like. It, it is kind of easy <laughs> you know it's just like these kind of moments just just happen now like you know i seen i seen him i said will you stand back here like you know he wasn't walking down and seeing it this is now this is one that i orchestrated i said i'd seen i took a similar picture but the outfit wasn't as cool it wasn't like you know i knew there was a better picture there so when we went back out on it i was like oh can you stand here the lighting was getting perfect coming into golden hours like oh can you stand here can you can you do can you do that like you know yeah just put your hand up look here you know, kind of that. So I do orchestrate. I've gotten better at orchestrating um, pictures with him. Before, I just like you know, I I take what I was given, you know, just take take portraits on the fly. But now I'm much more kind of yeah. confident in myself and in my abilities. So I'll go up and I'll ask I'll ask people to oh stand here, do that, do this, direct them a bit more. You know, and that I think that comes in there. Awesome. So I'm imagining you're wearing like the same thing, but just like a different colorway. <laughs> I'm probably wearing this. I'm probably wearing <laughs> a black t-shirt and a black shorts. I wear all black because um. I'm so pale. I have to put on so much sun cream that it ruins all my white t-shirts. So yeah. I'm usually on black on black. <laughs> all right. So how do you, are, are you hanging with these guys like Snoop Dogg smoking or do you just like, you know, it's getting so high you can't even function. And no, like... <laughs> normally like we go in and he's chatting to them and being around him, you meet so many people and he's so charismatic. Like kind of so charismatic and such a big celebrity in his own right that like, I don't get intimidated by, by anyone. It's just like, you know, you're the second, like, no matter who I bump into, you're usually the second most famous person I've seen that day. So yeah. it's just like, it doesn't bother me at all now. I just think about getting cool pictures. I'm not intimidated by who they are or what they've done or like, you know, how big they are. So I think it, they kind of pick up on that, that I'm not like, you know, fanboying or, or like, you know, starstruck by them. I'm just like, normally I'm just like, oh, what's up, Snoop? How's things? You enjoy in Ireland? Like, a cool jersey. Like, oh, yeah, we're playing. We're going to win the World Cup and all. Like, so I just chat to them. And that so puts people at Snoop ease then. Does Snoop hand you the blunt and do you take it or do you say no? Uh, I, uh, I, <laughs> I, I used to, I used to agree. Not as much as I do anymore now. You know, my, yeah. my wife wasn't the biggest fan of it. So the, the odd, the odd time I, for someone like Snoop, you got it. You can't say no to uncle Snoop, right? but yeah, uh, yeah. but the, the every, every day is, is, is behind me now. But so this, that, that's, so this is what I try and do. Even my website, I try to add some personal stuff. This is from our honeymoon when we went on safari. So I try and get a bit of everything in there. So the National Geographic are watching. Yeah, um, the, he looks like he's about ready to murder you. How far away were you? Yeah, <laughs> it was very cool. It was a very cool experience. I recommend awesome. the safari to anyone. These are great. All right. Where is this at? This is like That was in Monaco, and that is... Uh... Those are fun hats. Yeah, he's, he's a member of the French Foreign Legion. Oh. And uh, I actually actually can't remember his name. He was just he was one of the the royal guards for the Princess of Monica. So I just thought it was a cool hat, cool outfit, cool background. It's pretty you sweet. Know, I've got uh, like someone who isn't a celebrity. I've got two more months before I'm ineligible to join the French Foreign Legion. <laughs> no, no way. <laughs> right at Doesn't forty, it? they cut off. They it's cut total, off it's hard, such right? a weird concept. Like the French Foreign Legion will take anyone under a certain age, yeah. and you just show up with like nothing. And then, and like, like, you no kind of disappear. No one knows what happened to you. <laughs> <laughs> you end up in Corsica. Yeah. Uh, yeah, these are... These... Ah, oh, the suits. Does he Does he wear anything twice? Uh, he, do, he does. He does now. He, he repeats now. But he just... He's a very, very dapper man. Yeah. I'll give him that. It makes it easy. He looks He looks good in anything, though. It's, it's, it's kind of annoying. Just like, why don't I look good in that, like... Yeah. So, oh, this. I mean, is this Steve Jobs? Is this the Steve Jobs? So this is for this is for the the proper Apple when they were announcing they did an Apple kind of a take their oh, take on, a, on an yeah. Apple on, on, unveil. So originally this was actually meant to be done against a green screen. So we had the green screen set up, and they had all the video lighting, and then there was black flags to cut them off. You know, to to create obviously to do a black flag zoo to create shadow. So as he was coming in to review some of the video. I took a picture of him walking against the black flag and obviously there's a big, there's a big a, um, continuous light gridded uh, to like camera right. And then when I seen it, I was like, 
was like, oh, that looks like the Steve Jobs, the real, that iconic Steve Jobs picture. Yeah. So it's just like, oh, you stand there, stand against this, do that. And then we got the Steve Jobs picture and I actually think it came out, it came out much more successful than the one against the green screen. So that's another tip for people. Be ready to improvise, you know, just cause you have a plan in your head. Don't always stick to that. You gotta, you gotta let it, let it come. Yeah. That, that looks like the Snoop. Yeah. Oh yeah. Is that Johnny Depp? I was. Sure, yeah. Sure, <laughs> sure is Johnny Depp. Oh, Johnny in the background. <laughs> so like, what are your favorite photographs? Um, I don't know. They're like, yeah, if you, they should, yeah, there should be a, um, which one should I go to? I don't know. People ask me all the time, which are my favorite. They're all like my kids, you know, like I can't, I can't just pick a, a favorite one. Like the GQ one was super cool just cause it was GQ. Like, you know, it was a major milestone to have that in your portfolio, a GQ, um, yeah. feature. So like the, obviously that was unreal. I, like the Mike Tyson one was went like viral and, you know, got, got me a lot of attention. Um, there's just so many of them. I don't know. Like it changes all the time. I think I've just, I've too, I've too many ones that I'd like to, to, to pick a favorite. I like them all. <laughs> well, I don't like them all. <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes I take bad pictures like anybody and I'm just like, Oh, they're not great. But I uh, hop over to your I, Instagram. So ginger underscore beard underscore photos follow Dave. So I was trying to get gin, just ginger beard photos, but someone's trying to sell it to me and I refuse to, to pay for it. So, well, you should, I mean, let's go rough them up, you know, no, you got the crew. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I know, I know I'm going to have to find them. Have, all right. So have you ever out. like, have your photos ever been so bad that Connor's like, get over here. Let's we're fighting. <laughs> yeah, no, he's, he's, he's very, I, um, it's good. Like he's very like, critical. Isn't the right word. He's a, um, if I do a bad job, he's not afraid to tell me. And if I do a good job, he's, he'll, he'll tell me he's very, like we have a good rapport and a good relationship that if it is a bad picture, he'll tell me, he's like, they're all shit. <laughs> and like, you know, it's like, they're all, they're all bad. Or if I take a good one, he's like, they're, they're, they're brilliant. Like they're crackers. So he know he knows, and he's not afraid to tell me and we go back and forth and then we're like, all right, well, and because it's the same person, I try and change up what I'm doing all the time. Like even yeah, just the lighting and how I do things. So I always try and keep it fresh for him. So he's not just getting repetitive pictures over and over again. So if I like, I do a, a same, like, the same picture on the jet I'm like all right well i don't want to do that one again so we'll try and i'll try and change it up every every so often just so he's constantly getting fresh images and fresh pictures and i'm that getting so new ways of doing things i love this oh well, let's snip again it's do double g all right so what's like what's your next year look like do you know where you're going so we're gearing up now towards it looks like connor's Kong's comeback fight. So we'll be all guns blazing for, for that. So back into training camp, back, back doing that. Um, I'm sure there'll be loads of new, <laughs> new ventures that he goes into proper 12 forge Irish stout, the, the black forge in his McGregor fast, all of his, all of his brands are all full, full, full tilt ahead. So it's, I never know what I'm going to do. All I know is that I'm going to be busy. <laughs> that's I just know I'm gonna be busy oh man so did you get to meet offset too I I met offset okay. a different day that that Sorry, day offset actually yeah I met I met I met takeoff so uh offset wasn't actually at the Dublin show but I met him in LA then but I am um, they're they're an interesting interesting group the, the amigos yeah it was so sad when he died yeah 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 it was it was tragic I actually thought he he was probably the when it came to a lyricist, he was probably the best one out of the group. Offset yeah, I would agree. Very good, though. I would agree. Oh, he's amazing. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna go back to here. All right, so um, just in terms of like advice for people starting out, I want to maybe you know ask a few questions that we get all the time. And when the first one is always like, "What advice do you have?" Like, I wanna, I wanna be where you're at now. So like for people starting out now. How do they like lay the foundation to like maybe in a few years get to do something as cool as what you're doing? Um, so the I think the the, the perfect way to uh, to do it is to is to one you have to find something that you're actually passionate about doing. Like I was I was was and still am I was 
into MMA long before I was into, in, in like, you know, before I even knew who Connor was, I was mad about MMA and I knew what it was and I was passionate about it. So that like, so, so that, I think that's the first thing you have to, if you're into, if you're into music photography, you have to be into music. You can't just be into taking pictures of bands or meeting famous people. I don't think that that will never work and it will come across of, on your work. You have to know your subject, no matter what it is, if you're into fashion, if it's sports, if you're into food and you want to be a food photographer, I think you need whatever your subject is, you have to be passionate about that and then add photography. It's hard to add photography and then the next bit. So like, I, I love food, but I'm not the best food photographer because I, that isn't where my passion, passion lay. So I think you need to be passionate about what your subject matter is. And that can be anything like, you know, like I said, fashion, food, sports, travel, anything you have to love what you're taking photos of and then love taking photos of that. So that doesn't always go hand in hand. Like I love food. But I don't love taking pictures of food. I'm not very good at it, but it just kind of, it goes hand in hand. I love, I love taking pictures of people. Like I, I even, I annoy my wife all the time, no matter where we go, I always have a camera. That's why I bought the, uh, the LQ too. I bring this around everywhere with me. Whenever we go anywhere, I bring it with me and it just annoys her to no end because I'm always taking pictures of, of things. So you have to love, like I love photography. I love MMA and I love sports photography. So it kind of just fused and merged. And that's kind of what I like. I think that would be my first advice. It, it's hard to make a living doing this. It's hard to, it's hard to make money in photography. So you have to love it first and then hope the financial side catches up. Do you have any like, side gigs where you take other jobs or is it is it pretty much yeah so so, so things like the like outside of just photography or like so outside of connor yeah i do i get the odd i get i get things like the migos i shot post malone i shoot like all different like smaller things um when when and where i can but i'm i'm lucky to be in a position where i'm full-time with connor full-time with his production at the head photographer and head of his production company that I don't need to like branch off and, and do corporate corporate gigs, but there was definitely a time that I, I would shoot anything like, you know, when you're coming up, like I was saying, your, your passion. So I was passionate about MMA for, photography, but I was still taking corporate gigs. I was taking pictures of anything, weddings, I was taking pictures of like corporate events for companies, everything to build up, to have enough money to be able to devote myself full time to, to one thing. I'm going to assume that you might not be allowed to shoot other MMA people. Is that, is that about um, right? No, I shoot, I, 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 shoot, I shoot like a lot of our, a lot, lot of me and Connor's friends are, are MMA fighters. So I, sh I shoot them, shoot them all the time. Well, they gotta be in the circle so, though. But like, if it was a Yeah, I don't, <laughs> I, yeah, I don't, I don't shoot a, uh, I don't, I don't shoot anyone Connor's gonna fight. I kind of might fight, but I, uh, I just wouldn't do that anyway. Yeah, so the comeback fight, is that announced? Is that, is there a date to it? No, there's no day to it yet, but keep keep, keep your eyes peeled. All right, Come on, nice. as you said, the greatest greatest comeback in sports history. It's, oh, it's I'm excited. I'm yeah, excited. It be. Um, <laughs> so, are you gonna make a book or anything like out of all your work with him? Like, you know, print yeah, anything? Yeah, that is that is definitely the dream. It is a, uh, it's slowly making its way to reality. I can't give out too much on it, on but. There, there will be a book, no matter what happens, there will, there will definitely be a book when, where, who does it is, uh, is, is still in the works, but we're hoping to have it out, out, out soon. We're is it going to have on, some pop-up up page? I think it'd be really cool to have a pop-up book. You know? It's going to have some scratch and sniff pages. Like you open one and a fist just comes out and like hits you. I want to have ones where like you, you scratch his top and you can smell. So that was cool. It's going to be, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be an art piece. It's going to be, um, it's going to be something that I'm very proud to, to, to put out as a very, very dyslexic person to have a book and hopefully to have it get to a bestseller will the irony will not be lost on me. So that is, that is the, the goal and that's the dream. And I think that's, that's what's going to happen. We're going to have a very, very cool book out for it. That's awesome. We should do like a, an entire process of like your book coming to life and make a tutorial out of it, of like everything that yeah. you're choosing from the size to like, you know, yeah, getting definitely. it printed, the type of paper like how you're going to like lay everything out. I love that sort of thing. And like all of those, you know, decisions that you have to make and, and like bringing something to life. And it's really cool just to, you know, I personally love watching other artists make decisions and that's essentially where this company yeah. came from. So the, um, really cool. the candid sports photography 
uh, tutorial. That's that, that. That's what we'll do. Sign me up. I think everyone would love yeah, to see no that. No problem. Very cool. No problem. So, what time is it where you're at right now? Is it middle of the night? Uh, it is nine. It's nine forty at night. Oh, and, nice. uh, you can see my phone lighting up here about uh so he's probably going to train in soon so i'll probably get off this call and jump in the car and we'll go uh, we'll oh go you're training. gonna be late you're gonna get a whooping aren't you ah no <laughs> it's grand he's a uh he 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 he, tra he trains late so we're all good nice well i appreciate your time it was great talking to you um any no last problem. final thoughts final words before we hop off no just a um I so suppose just for updates on, on, on the on the book or, or anything else, just go on to Ginger Beer Photography or Ginger Beer Photos on Instagram, Ginger Beer Photography on my website. And uh, yeah, just if you have any questions or anything, just always let me know. I'm always happy to, to help out where I can. And like I said, no way endorsed and nothing going on, but sign up to ProEDU and check out the, the tutorials. They've been a massive help to me and I know they'll help other people as well. So I really appreciate the work that. you're doing over there. It's great. That means a lot. Thank you so much. Well, no thank you again. And uh, hopefully we can meet up in person one day. That'd be awesome. Right. Look forward to it. All right. Thanks. This podcast is officially over. See you next time. Catch you a little later on down the trail, dude. Thanks for listening. I get out of here and start shooting. I can remember very distinctly one of the very first classes. You had to take um, one roll of film and, and tell a story. And you got, you know, four by six prints made of them and you put them on the wall. I remember watching some of the people's images go up on the board and being like, oh my God, what did I get myself into? These people are so talented. I was a DJ. I worked a lot at night. Sort of felt that itch to do something else. And after some soul searching, the only thing that I was excited about doing was taking pictures. And I, I would Photoshop myself into other places. And a lot of times it never even went online. I didn't care because it wasn't for necessarily the world. It was because I wished I was anywhere other than where I was. I suppose academically I failed everything. So I was left with very few choices. Uh, I was cater waitering. I'd work till you know, 11, 12 o'clock at night retouch until three or four in the morning even though I didn't really have the talent I'd be willing to work when other people would sleep and at times I look at my work and I think damn I'm a shitty photographer fuck it's nothing you know you have this idea of what can be done because you're assisting and you just can't create it you know so often today's artists I think we get ideas and we end up sitting on them and we don't follow through I think we're our, we can be our worst enemies I will talk myself out of a project before I even begin it because I think about all the things that might go wrong or could go wrong. When you first start out with doing anything, you know, you've got like five people, you know, one of those is your mum following you and it's just like difficult to get accurate feedback. You have to be willing to be rejected by the artwork, by yourself, by your peers. We get worried what our peers are gonna think. We get worried what the talent is going to think or what the celebrity is gonna think. And for me, it was always like, I understand that, but I also understand that you have to be passionate enough to throw the excuses aside and just start the process. First struggling, then assisting full-time for three years, then struggling some more, then retouching, freelancing, getting my first job. But I'll lay in bed and something will just pop in my head and I just go, what if? Wouldn't it be interesting if? Try it, it didn't work, throw it out. Try it, it didn't work, throw it out. Try it, it works, it works, it doesn't work, throw it out. You know, you don't become a great photographer, you don't become a great painter, you don't become a great sculptor without having some downfalls and, and, and going in the wrong direction. I allow myself to fail because I like to fail because I like to grow. But you have to decide that you want it because it's not easy to be great at anything. Even though I'm not at the place I want to be, I'm still moving forward. Nobody's going to love everything that we do. But I think you have to take a chance.